This is day three in my six mark challenge for AQA GCC Science. In the run up to the exams, Monday to Saturday, I'll post a new video each day with a six mark question so that you can practice how to answer them. You can find a link in the description below to each week's questions and access all the videos via the playlist. Today's question is about one of the required practicals from physics paper one. Now, before you dive in, just a reminder, when you answer a six mark question, your answer needs to be laid out in a logical order, but that doesn't mean that you have to write in sentences or paragraphs. There are no marks for doing that. And in fact, your examiner is going to like it if you answer in the form of bullet points, numbered lists or tables, because it makes your answer clearer and easier for them to follow and to mark. You also need to make sure that you're answering the full question and for a method question like this, giving us a method that will actually give valid data. If you haven't already, pause the video and give yourself six minutes to answer this six mark question. Often for these method questions, you need to say more than six things in order to get the six marks. But here, this is quite a straightforward practical activity and therefore there are really only six things that you need to say. When we're talking about the specific heat capacity of a material, the word specific refers to the fact that we're not just interested in how much energy it takes to heat up an object, but we're interested in how much energy it takes to heat up one kilogram of an object or a material by one degree C. So the first thing that we need to do is establish how heavy our metal block is. So we would measure the mass using a balance. And wherever you can, you do want to name the equipment that you're using. Next, we want to make sure that as much of the energy as we're giving that block as possible is going into raising the temperature of the block and increasing the thermal store of energy and not just being dissipated to the surroundings. So the second thing I'm going to include is that I'm going to insulate my block. Then I need some way of raising the temperature and I'm going to use an electrical heater and I need to know how much energy is being given to the block. So the most normal way of doing this would be to make a circuit that includes an ammeter and a voltmeter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use those to work out how much energy has been transferred. There is also another piece of equipment called a joule meter that basically does this for you. But since these aren't mentioned in the GCC physics specification, I would recommend sticking with the ammeter and the voltmeter, which are, even if it means there's a little bit more complicated maths. So what we do is we take the power equation and we know that power is current multiplied by potential difference. And so that tells us how much energy is being transferred per second. So if we then time how long we're heating the block for, we can work out how much energy is transferred by doing E is power times time. So we're going to use our little electrical heater to heat the block for a set amount of time, say five minutes. And that will then allow us to use that power equation to work out how much energy has been transferred. We're going to assume that the amount of work that's done by the circuit and by the electrical heater is equal to the increase in the thermal store. Obviously, that's not going to be 100 percent true because there is going to be some heat loss to the surroundings. But that's the assumption that we're making. We're then going to measure the temperature of the block using a thermometer at the start and the end of the experiment, and this will allow us to calculate a temperature change. Then we can use our specific heat capacity formula rearranged and we can work out that specific heat capacity is going to be the change in energy divided by the mass times the change in temperature. How did you get on? Hopefully you found that physics question quite straightforward and you're now ready to go back to biology, this time for paper two. For tomorrow's question, we're looking at two students who want to see what the impact of listening to classical music is on their reaction time. Don't forget, in the description below, there's a link to a document with all of the questions for this week's videos, and also there's a playlist of all of the videos up together. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again tomorrow for day four of our six mark challenge. If you have found this video and these questions useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCC Science revision videos coming soon.